Rudy Giuliani is conceding that he made false statements about Georgia election workers. That's right. In a court filing, he does not dispute falsely claiming two of those workers committed ballot fraud during the 2020 presidential election. However, Giuliani also doesn't admit his statements caused damage. This comes in the defamation lawsuit brought by Ruby Freeman and Andrea Shea Moss in 2021. In a statement, Freeman and Moss's lawyer said the former New York City mayor conceded, quote, what we have always known to be true. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now. Hi there, Caitlin. So what do you make of Giuliani conceding to making false statements about these election workers? Hey there, good to see you both. Well, in some, on some level, this is a little bit of accountability and some uh, justice a little bit for these two defendants, although Giuliani is not admitting flat out that he lied about what happened here. Um, and he is also facing sanctions um, when it comes to his own ability to practice law and also uh, heading into some of these other investigations. Having said that, however, viewers might remember these two defendants, especially Ruby Freeman, who mm -hmm. testified in front of the January 6th committee and gave really moving emotional testimony about what kind of impact these fraudulent claims had against them personally. I mean, Giuliani was uh, saying that they had moved all these fraudulent ballots and tried to feed them into machines. And a memorable line from Ruby Freeman's testimony during the January 6th committee hearing was, do you know what it's like to have the president of the United States going after you? And so there were serious um, consequences that these uh, false statements about their behavior had on them personally, had ended their lives, essentially. And election workers are, you know, volunteers, right? Yeah. These are these are people, everyday people who are uh, giving up their time as this kind of public service um, and were essentially slandered. And so there is a level of accountability, although this has more to do with uh, kind of Giuliani, Giuliani's broader broader case and what is coming. Yeah, I remember how, how she said that she went, she feared for her life, that yeah. she couldn't even go outside. And it's a great point that she made when you're just a volunteer trying to make sure elections are done well and then all of a sudden you're the target of a, of a, a president. Yeah. Um, some other topics we want to discuss with you, Caitlin. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis laying off more than a third of his campaign staff. I've seen so many headlines about him trimming uh, the fat, so to speak, on his team. What does that say about his strategy and the future of his bid? Yeah, Errol, this is a shakeup of the campaign at a time where we have seen him either stagnant or falling in terms of favorability in the polls. And also as the campaign has spent a lot of money, particularly mm. on travel and has been coming under scrutiny for how they've kind of handled the campaign, how they've handled the finances and have uh, not as much to show for it. Donald Trump remains the front runner in this race. He's been leading in uh, national but early state polls as well. And we we haven't seen DeSantis kind of gain that traction that many had expected him to in this race. So he's faced uh, kind of a restructuring of his campaign. His campaign manager has said that this is part of a streamlined effort to make him better positioned to go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with uh, his Republican rivals, but also with Joe Biden. We'll see. The biggest test for DeSantis will really be that debate, which is uh, around this time next month, whether he can position himself as as the clear alternative to Donald Trump. Meanwhile, you have, um, you know, candidates swarming Iowa. Everybody's going there this weekend to make their case that they can be uh, that alternative. So uh, a big news coming from the campaign that they hope will put them in better position, but also raising some questions about how the campaign has been handled so far. Well, Iowa in the summertime is a nice place to be. But uh, given all of that context, Caitlin, it's great that on America Decides tonight, you're actually going to be interviewing Ken Cuccinelli, the founder of a pro DeSantis super PAC. Uh, tell us more about what the relationship's been like between the campaign and the super PAC and what you're hoping to hear from him. Yeah, Lana, and this has to do with what we were just talking about, which is that um, Ron DeSantis, before he got in this race, this super PAC had really kind of laid a ton of groundwork for him. They raised a ton of money, $130 million. They had a lot of staff. Um, they were taking care of kind of the big infrastructure points of a campaign traditionally. So, um, you know, organizing people, having uh, training door knockers, and really kind of taking, uh, taking that. So that's why there's also 
also bitten some criticism of the DeSantis campaign because they had a lot of running room with this PAC set up. Um, having said that, there are questions about kind of the relationship that the PAC and the campaign have. Um, the PAC is having a bus tour in Iowa, and uh, Ron DeSantis will be participating in that. Um, so we are curious to hear from the PAC about, you know, what they make of the direction of the campaign, given that they have uh, laid this groundwork for him. Um, there have been a lot of, um, you know, comparisons to past governors who have gotten into the Republican primary with a big splash and a lot of money and kind of fizzled out. Uh, so we'll see whether there are any real comparisons there or uh, what the PAC and what DeSantis supporters hope to see in terms of a course correction. And it's a good reminder that you may be popular in your home state, but people elsewhere have to like you, right? When you meet with them and when mm. you campaign, it's a really important component of running for president. Caitlin Huey Burns, always great to see you. Thanks so much. Uh, that Thank should you. be a great interview. And we can all watch America Decides at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS News.